not to. The book puts this in as a lemma, and it really is something that makes the description easier to do. So maybe I should do what they do, because otherwise, somewhere along the way, I'm going to need this word, and I won't have it, and I better do it now. The book has something called Q. Q takes a string W. And here's what it does. It does something really simple. It's not complicated. It's just some notation for describing things easier. Q is a function that takes a string w. And it outputs a Turing machine that does nothing but print w as output. Okay, So Q of w is a Turing machine. <coughs> that outputs w. Does it do it for all w's, whatever it is? It's just a machine that... It's just a machine that does nothing but output w. It's a fixed machine. You can put anything into this machine. All it's going to do is output w. If I do q of 0, 1, then that's a term machine that just outputs 0, 1. You're going to think, why do I need this notation? You'll see in a second. What if I stick a Turing machine into this Turing machine? What if I stick in a description of a Turing machine called A? This is a weird thing to do, but I could do it. I put a big string in here. Then this produces another Turing machine that does nothing but output the description of the Turing machine A, the encoding of A. All right? That's all it does. It's another Turing machine, not A itself. It's a Turing machine that outputs A. Everyone understand what Q does and how we might use it? We're going to use it right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's my question. Is Q the Turing machine, or does Q a function that generates a Turing machine? Q is that Turing machine. Q of W is the Turing machine that outputs W. Yes. Yes. OK, so here's what A does. Here's A's job. A saves Q of B on the tape. In a program, what it does is save this in memory. Now, before I go on, what does this mean? It means it makes a Turing machine that does nothing but output the encoding of B, and it puts that Turing machine on the tape. The encoding of that Turing machine. The encoding of that Turing machine on the tape, right. No, no. This no, it puts no, it puts that actual Turing machine on the tape. Well, the encoding of that Turing machine, fine. Q of B is the encoding of that Turing. Oh, that's what you asked me here. Is this the Turing machine or the encoding of the Turing machine? Is it? <laughs> it puts on the tape an encoding of a Turing machine whose job it is to do nothing but print out the description of B. Now, the thing is, we don't know what this should do right now because we don't know what B is. So let me explain what B does. So hold off, because we can't really finish this step or know the details until we do this. But once we do know this, we'll be able to take the encoding of what B does, create a Turing machine that prints that encoding, and put it over here. Oh, you really need to see a program that does this. But let me finish this first. All right, so here's what B does. Get the output of A from the tape. Okay, it goes ahead on the tape and looks at whatever A outputted. In other words, what is it getting from the tape? It's getting its own description. <laughs> this is a key part. It's looking at the tape and finding its own description, something that says, how it works. And it computes. It actually computes this. And in a language, this is usually a, a two-second step, usually putting brackets or quotes around something. It computes Q of B, which equals A. And I'll make a comment. That's a program that prints out B. Okay, So it computes this. 
It looks on the tape and finds a description of B. It computes a Turing machine that's supposed to print that description out. It can do that because any Turing machine can compute Q of another Turing machine. And now that it's got this, now it's figured out A. Here's what it does. It prints out that A followed by the B. You got to think this is hocus pocus. Because it just doesn't look like it means anything. But it really does. And the best way for me to describe to you what it means, instead of sitting here and running through the semantics of this and going back to Q and unraveling it, it'll just tie your neurons in a knot unless you've had 10 years to think about it. Look at it. It's accurate. It's really right. But you'll appreciate why it's right if I show you how to do it in a language rather than on a Turing machine. All right, so let's do that in parallel to this. I will mimic this plan in Logo. Logo isn't too hard to understand. I'll explain the details of it as we go. I'll mimic this in Logo. It'll be a three-line program. And we will have it work just because we followed this strategy. And then you'll probably learn what this strategy means more by the example than, than use the example as a particular case of this. You probably don't get this yet, but you will get it when you see the example. All right, so questions before I go on. In parallel to this, I will mimic this plan in Logo. Logo isn't too hard to understand. I'll explain the details of it as we go. I'll mimic this in Logo. It'll be a three-line program. And we will have it work just because we followed this strategy. And then you'll probably learn what this strategy means more by the example than, than use the example as a particular case of this. You probably don't get this yet, but you will get it when you see the example. All right, so questions before I go on. Ready to see this example and then maybe ask a question? All right. So this example is in Logo. We're going to write a self-program in Logo. Now in Logo, when you write a procedure, you start it with a word to. So here's the procedure, to self. And here's end. That ends the procedure. All right. Ooh, now what goes inside? There's only two lines, and it's going to write itself. It's so cool. It's the coolest thing. I had so much fun playing with this uh, last night. All right. Are you exposing your kids to this? Thing? No, no. I just kicked them downstairs. I said, leave me alone. I've got to think. <laughs> this is so hard to think about. I... Oh, I see. They're, well, well, one of them's not five yet. Maybe I should expose him to it. He's only three. Forget world class. We're talking about universe class. <laughs> I could teach him the words recursion theorem. That would make him quite a conversationalist. <laughs> All right. The first thing we do, part one of this program, is write some piece of code that saves the description of the second part of the program onto a tape. So here's what that looks like in, in Logo. You make a variable, let's call it x. And we don't have tapes in Logo. We have memory. And x is a variable in memory. So we're going to save this description in memory. And we're going to save it in a place called x. So it looks like this. Make x. And right in here, where's my colors? Let's go for purple. Right in here will go the description of B. But I can't put it in yet because I don't know what it is. That's exactly how you should write one of these programs. You store what the program is going to be further down. And then you write the program further down. And when you're done, you stick it back in here. Okay, That's just what this is telling you to do. To make it a little more sense, but not yet. right? We have to go on. OK. So what is B supposed to do? B is supposed to get this output A from the tape. How does it do that? It refers to this memory variable, x. Now in Logo, if you want to get the value of a variable called x, you put a colon in front of it. Dots x, it's called. And that gives you the contents of it. What's it like? Yeah, is it like what? Like, it's, like, um, it's like a star in C, contents of it. You know if you program in C. Um, in Java, they don't have these things. Uh, in Scheme, they don't have these things. What the hell? You put dots in front of the variable to get the contents of it. It doesn't matter if you've seen 